A quick look at my watch tells me it's now safe to wish you a very good evening and a warm welcome at our presentation of Atlas Copco. We are a team from Lund University in Sweden, and although we represent a Swedish university, we have very little Swedish influence in our team, besides from the fact that we buy our furniture at IKEA, of course. We have two Germans, Dave and Henrik, one Singaporean, Chadwick, and two Dutchmen, both Kuhn and myself, Martijn. We issue a hold recommendation on Atlas Copco with a target price of 291 Swedish crowns, and in order to better understand the rationale behind this recommendation, it's first important to get to know Atlas Copco or Atco as a company better. Atco is a leading player in the industrial machinery and equipment industry and operates in four different business segments. To give an indication of about its size, it's a global market leader in compressors, which are used in virtually any industry. Additionally, it makes a mining equipment for the biggest mining companies like BHP, Billiton, and uh, another big mining company, which I'll get back to you later. Ad additionally, one out of every three cars is produced with Atco's industrial tools. The company's revenues are diversified, with the compressor business technique being the biggest big segment. Additionally, revenues can be diversified between aftermarket services and traditional equipment sales. Aftermarket services relate to maintenance, spare part, and rental. Atco's ownership structure can be classified as dispersed, with a Swedish investment company being the biggest investor with 17% of ownership. Atco has two classes of shares, and we focus our valuation on the A share, give which trades at a historic premium of around 8% compared to the B share, given its high liquidity and more voting rights. When comparing Atco's PE and EV EBITDA multiple with its peers, we clearly see that the company is trading at a premium. A relative valuation will therefore certainly lead to the conclusion that the company is overvalued. The main question that arises from this is, are these high multiples justified, or is Atco indeed a share worth selling? Well, this is an important question, and our team answers it by having a positive outlook on the company. We have three main reasons to be optimistic. One, a bullish industry outlook. Two, enviable competitive position. And three, strong company financials. Now let's take a look at the industry outlook for Atlas Copco. The industrial machinery and equipment industry is characterized by high barriers to entry. To be competitive, firms in the industry require high amounts of capital as well as global access to distribution channels that cannot be established overnight. Bargaining powers of customers are generally low due to broad customer portfolio. On the contrary, there exists very intense competition within the industry. Furthermore, the growth of the industry is highly dependent on the world economic growth. Our analysis shows a 86% correlation between the organic order growth and the real GDP growth of OECD countries. Given the fact that the world economic growth is anticipated to rise, we foresee a favorable picture for the industry as a whole. Now let's turn to how up Atco's and Viable's uh, positioning and it enables the company to capture this industry growth. Atco achieves a competitive advantage because of three main reasons. First of all, the company is known as a strong innovator, which is essential to sustain competitiveness in this industry. Secondly, the earlier described service segments provide a solid base to the company's revenue streams. Thirdly, the company operates very asset light, which results in a very flexible organization. With regard to the innovativeness, the company has average R&D expenditures compared to its main competitors. However, it actively leverages the capacities and competencies of its main suppliers for the non-core components, while it targets its R&D efforts only on the core components. Therefore, relatively speaking, the company actually has high R&D expenditures. As a result, the company has a very strong R&D track record, of which proof can be found in the company's inclusion in the Forbes list of 100 most innovative companies. All in all, this positions the company well to meet future demand for more innovative and sustainable products. With regard to its service activities, we believe that the company will be able to capitalize on its investments in this highly profitable service platform more in the future. Moreover, although the company already has a relatively high proportion of its revenues coming from the service platform, we believe that the company will be able to expand this even further. For the fact that the service revenues are less cyclical in nature, this also helps stabilizing the company's revenues during economic downturns. 
When we look at how the company strategy translates into numbers, we clearly see that the company depends on a very asset light operation, which is exemplified by the high fixed asset turnover on the right hand side of the ROIC tree. Coupled with the company's best in class operating margin, the company was able to harvest a return on invested capital of 24.9%, which is remarkably high as opposed to Atco's main competitors, Sandvik and Caterpillar. The solid operating results of Atco bring us to the third positive point about the company, strong financials. Historically, the compressor technique and the industrial technique business segments have shown the highest revenue growth rates, while mining and rock excavation has shown a negative overall trend from 2011 to 14. We expect, due to more favorable commodity prices, this trend to pick up again and apply conservative growth estimates for the other three segments. This translates to a top-line CAGR of 5.9% for the forecast period, while for the continuing value period, we apply a growth, uh, growth estimate of 3.2% per year for each business segment, slightly below the world economy growth. Mainly as a result of Atco's direct selling approach, the company was able to generate higher margins as opposed to its peers. The, uh, the soft decline within recent years is thereby expected to continue due to increased competition and to align At Atco's margins more with upper end levels in the peer group. Positive effect from the strong service segment and synergies from diversification are thereby being offset by CapEx increases slightly faster than revenue growth. Atco has very robust operating cash flows and strong liquidity. In addition to that, they show very low leverage. Even after we capitalized operating lease payments and R&D expenses, the company maintains a high debt capacity and shows an excellent interest coverage of 11. This, in turn, enables the company to finance future growth opportunities and to react quickly on the m and market. In fact, a substantial part of the company's revenue growth has been alleviated by the company's acquisition activity. In order to reflect the inherent differences between the four business segments, we have uh, applied a some of the parts valuation. As mentioned earlier, we arrive at the fair share price of 291 Swedish crowns, of which almost half is made up by the compressor technique business segment. In doing this analysis, we have applied different WACs for each business segment, ranging from 6.2 to 7.7%, and assumed these to be constant as we do not anticipate any major changes in capital structure. In order to model the impact of changes in cost of capital to our recommendation, we have performed a Monte Carlo analysis, which shows us, which shows us a moderate upside potential, which in turn um, uh, confirms our whole recommendation. We have identified several risks that could harm ATCO, but today we will focus on the higher likelihood and the bigger impact ones. Economic risk <coughs> has the highest probability to ATCO. As we've heard earlier, the order growth of ATCO is highly dependent with uh, economic performance. Therefore, a, GDP, a downfall in GDP growth rates could harm the company's performance and therefore lead to a decline in share price. A stress test reveals that a significant downfall in uh, economic growth rates would require a change in our recommendation to a sell. Additionally, as the company generates most of its revenues from outside of Sweden, there is a significant risk to the value of the Swedish krona. Atco's market risk is twofold. Firstly, low price competition arising from Asia might cause customers to defect. Secondly, the direct and indi in indirect dependence on commodity prices impacts Atco's purchasing prices as well as the demand for its mining products. Atco's operational risk stems from the dependency on its suppliers. Operating asset light has many advantages but also directly exposes the company to price and quality changes of their suppliers. <coughs> Poorly governed vertical relationship can therefore lead to a decrease in quality and therefore a loss of brand reputation. Furthermore, pressure from outside suppliers might harm the, economic, uh, the uh, EBIT margins because cost of goods sold would then go up. However, a stress test reveals that our recommendation is rather insensitive to such changes. We started off our presentation with the finding that Atco's high multiples vis-a-vis -vis that of its peers might indicate a share worth selling. However, ladies and gentlemen, taking all the early analysis in mind, we believe that the high multiples are mere reflection of the company's superiority and therefore our whole recommendation is justified. Atco's shares are effectively priced at the moment, making the company truly an expensive gem. Thank you for your attention, and we are now more than happy to take any questions.